Welcome back to Statistics on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. So in the first probably half of this playlist, the kind of statistical tests that we've been using are what are referred to as parametric tests. They tend to be the most common tests that are covered in most science courses, whether it's biology, chemistry, etc. Um, and those tests are parametric, which means there's a lot more stringent and rigorous assumptions that go into the, the actual population and the data and so forth. And one of those important stipulations is that the data is normal. Now, what do you do if the data is not normal, if it's not a normal distribution? Well, that's one of the criteria that would cause you to use a non-parametric test. And we're going to start going over some of these non-parametric tests. Now, I'm going to say this. These generally, unless you have some special program like SPSS or something like that, these have to be calculated by hand. In the Excel add-ins, you do not have these options um, for doing non-parametric tests. So we'll sh I'll show you how to do them by hand in Excel, and most of them are really not that bad. Okay? Now... One of the benefits of these tests, which are these are the non-parametric tests, is they can, unlike the other ones, be used on ordinal data, they can be used on ranked data, and then, like I said, if the data is not normal, then your best bet is to use a non-parametric test. Now you can see out of the parametric ones that we've talked about, a paired t-test, which is the de uh, dependent t-test, unpaired t-test is an independent t-test, Pearson correlation, that's just normal regression that we talked about, and then ANOVAs. Each one of these parametric tests has a non-parametric equivalent. Now, if you were to look at your data and your experimental design, and you determined that the appropriate statistical test could be a paired or dependent t-test, but you knew that the data was not normal, then you can say, well, let's use the non-parametric equivalent of that test, which turns out to be a Wilcox and rank sum test. And this video, I'm going to show you how to perform a Wilcox and rank sum test. All right, so we've got our data here and we're ready to perform the Man Whitney U test. I also have from the PowerPoint this, these two formulas here, which are almost identical, but one's for the first group, one's for the second group, specifically, thus the subscripts one and two. Got my data here, two groups. Again, remember this particular non-parametric test is the equivalent to the independent t-test. So remember the number of, of data points in each group does not have to be the same, unlike the paired t-test or its non-parametric equivalent, the Wilcox and rank sum test, which we covered in the previous video. I've also just added this table of critical values that we're actually gonna use first to determine some of these important things over here before we do anything else. Um, now they use the terminology here n sub a and n sub b, we're using the corresponding n1 and n2, but it's the same kind of thing. All right, so first of all, n1, this is actually the number of samples that we have in group one. So let's actually determine this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So our n1 here is going to be 10. For N2, it looks like 8, but let's just verify this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. All right. Um, very quickly, if you have a very large data set, there's actually a way that you can do this actually very quickly to count these up. Um, one of the things you can actually do is, if you have the data analysis tool pack installed, if you don't, um, I have a video that I'll put in the, in the description here to link to it, where I discuss how to install it, but you would go to data, data analysis, and you can actually go to descriptive statistics. And I can go ahead and just for one of these columns, um, input this in and put my output right here. Let's do summary statistics. We don't really need that, but you can see that the count tells you right there is 10. Okay. Now I don't need that here, although I'll just leave it, but that's a way that you can actually add these up, see how many you have very quickly. All right. So I have this now. Now I need to do N1 times N2. Now the reason I'm doing this, and I bolded it, is because that's one of the important terms in each of these U calculations. I need to multiply these two together. Now I think we can all do 10 times 8 in our head, but I'm going to go ahead and program this just in case it was a, um, 
very large or weird numbers. So I'm going to get 80 there. Okay, then I need to do these two things, calculate n1 plus 1. So I'm going to take n1 plus 1, all right, that's pretty self-explanatory, I just like programming this, so n2 plus 1, this should actually be a plus 1 right here, so that's 8 plus 1 is 9, and what I can now do is calculate this middle term right here. This is going to be the quantity n1 plus 1, which is this one right here, times n1, and then I'm going to divide it by 2. So I'm going to do equals, and what I'm going to do is in parentheses, this n1 plus 1, okay, times n1, close parentheses, and then I'm going to divide that whole thing by 2 as it tells me. All right, that gives me 55. That's my middle term for the first one. Now I need to do the same thing with the n2s. So again, hit an equal sign here, open up our parentheses, do this n2 plus 1, and then I'm going to multiply that times n2, my 8, then divide the whole thing by 2 as it tells me, and I get 36 here for the second middle term. We now need to calculate R1 and R2, and to do those we're going to use this data right here now. So what I'm actually going to do is, and you can see I've added this, I need to put three columns here. This is very important. I want to put the group number in one column, another column that says all data, and another that says rank. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all the data from group 1. And I'm going to put it under all data. All right. Then, because these belong to group one, I'm just going to put a one in front of all of these. Okay. Now I'm going to do the same thing for group two. Take all of this data, copy it, and now paste it under this one column. And these belong to group two, so I'm going to put a two in this column for all of these. Oops. Okay. So now I have all the data in one group. Okay, which is what I want to do because in a Man Whitney U test, even though these are two groups of data, when you obtained them, to do the analysis, you have to assume they're all from one group, so you have to put them in one column. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my mouse on all data. I'm going to put highlight this cell, and assuming I'm under the data tab, I'm going to click filter. Now you'll see that I now have these arrows for group all data and rank. It's very important that you have it for all three of these, especially the group number and rank. So now you see I have these arrows for group number, all data, and rank. It's important that you have it for all of these, all three of these. So what I'm going to do is go to all data, click on this arrow, and I'm going to sort these in ascending order. So I click on ascending and you see what happened. It orders them from the lowest to the highest number. So what I'm going to do is now that these are in order, I'm going to rank them starting with one at the lowest, and then just go in order. There is probably a better way to order these with Excel with some function. I'm honestly not sure what it is. But the point is you rank them like this. Now these are ranked. What I need to do to calculate R1 is add up all of the ranks from group 1. The problem is they're now all out of order. I'll do the same thing for R2. I need to add up all the ranks for group 2. Here's why I had you put the 1 and 2 in front of here, because now we can go back to this arrow and sort them in ascending order. And now all the 1s are together, and it also kept the ranks with them. All right, so to calculate R1, let's do equals program function sum. I'm going to add up all the 1s associated with group 1. That's these, right? Hit enter. So there's my R1. My R2 equals, let's program another one, sum. I'm now going to add up all the ones that are associated with group 2. That's my group 2's. Enter, and that, that R2 ends up being 55. So now I can now apply these formulas. I need to take the N1 times N2 and add this middle term and then subtract the corresponding R. So let's calculate these u's. Equals, I need to take the n1 times n2, which is the same for both of them, add the corresponding middle term, this is going to be middle term 1, and then subtract r1. Enter. That gives me a u1 of 19. Now I'm going to do the same thing for u2. I'm going to take this n1 times n2, I'm going to add the middle term, this is middle term 2, and then I'm going to subtract r2. Equals, and I get 61. 
The rule is, is the U that you use is always the smaller one. So my U1, therefore, is the important one here. So that means my U statistic is 19. I can find these Man Whitney U test tables on Google. Just You just type in the Google keywords. Um, we're going to assume a 90% confidence level. So our P or alpha value that we're, our critical value is going to be 0 0.10. So we're going to use this top table up here. Um, our NA, that's our N1, that's the nomenclature we're using is 10, so let's scroll down to 10. Our NB or N2 is 8, which we see right here. So what I'm going to do is scroll over to 8, and it looks like my critical value of U is 20. So now I have everything I need to determine whether or not these two groups over here are statistically different or not. The way I'm going to think about this is this critical U is like the alpha value. It's like 0.05. This U statistic is like my p-value. Remember, if the p-value is less than 0.05, it was significant. If it was greater than it, it's not. So I say, is my U statistic greater than or less than the critical U? Well, in this case, the U statistic is actually less than the critical value. That means I reject the null hypothesis, and that means my difference is significant. I reject the null hypothesis because U statistic is less than the critical U. If this U statistic had been greater than the critical U, then I would not be able to reject the null hypothesis. I would fail to reject. And then there would be no significant differences between group one and group two. Okay? So pretty much this is a more tedious test to calculate by hand than the Wilcox and rank sum test, but once you get the hang of this, it's not that bad. Um, the main thing to make sure to do is to calculate it like this. Make this little table, group number, all data, and your rank, and try to program it, particularly if you have huge data sets, because it would be very tedious and error-prone to not do so. All right, so make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you for joining us today.